Now, here's how you would do this. And let's go over here and look at a sales comparison approach. And we have kind of alluded to this already. This is what we would call the CMA. The Comparative Market Analysis. And I have said, if you recall, that the listing process is a scheduled process, meaning you get a call and somebody says, hey, can you meet me tonight after work or let's talk Saturday and list the property. So you are given some time. One of the things that you would do is this comparative market analysis for your listing client or the seller. And I have use this one so we'll go ahead and continually use this three bedroom two bath 1500 square feet that's the symbol remember for square feet on one acre and it was built in 1999 this is the property that you are going to list so what you would now do is go out in the mls system because there are homes with the history and you are going to look at <clears throat> homes that have sold before. You don't typically want to look at current listed because anybody could list any house at any price. That doesn't mean it will sell. So you want to use homes that have actually sold. There are two other rules of thumb that you need to include. Now, <clears throat> If you are a numbers person like myself, you are going to have problems. This does not make sense. I will tell you that pulling a CMA is an art. And the more you do it, the better you get. It is not a formula. There is not a numbers program that you can plug in and go boop, 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 and get an answer. And that drives me absolute crazy because I am not very artistic, as you have seen by my pictures. I am a numbers guy. Well, that's a problem because pulling comps is an art. So under the principle of substitution or the sales comparison, what you would do is go out and the first rule of thumb is within one mile of your listing within one mile of the location of that property, this is where you are going to search for those properties that have sold. Now, I told you it's an art. It may not be one mile. It, it may only be half a mile. Because if it's a property in the city, one mile may be too far away. You may get 3,000 houses have sold within a mile of that. So you've got to narrow it down. If you're doing a house in the country, it might be 10 miles till you can find enough comps. So the rule of thumb is one mile. The second rule of thumb are properties that have sold within the last six months. Once again, it's an art. Maybe the market is so drastically changing right now that you can only look at properties that sold within the last month. Or conversely, your market has been pretty steady over the last two years. You may be able to look back at houses for up to a year ago. So it is an art. And these are the rule of thumb. They are not a hard and fast rule. You may have to change the distance. You may have to change the time frame. But what you are hoping for is that you find a house that was a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet, sitting on one acre of land, built in 1999, that sold for $150,000. You find a second house, three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet, sitting on one acre, built in 1999, that sold for $147,000. And 
In this particular case, we're going to use three because that's usually a common number. Three bedroom, two bath, and I bet you can guess how this game is going to get played out, right? One acre, built in 1999, and this one sold for $151,000. This is the perfect storm because you have found three comps that exactly match the property you are trying to list. So under the principle of substitution, when you give that CMA to your seller, and remember our CMA has to be what? Has to be a range of numbers. We can't give a value that's called an appraisal and we're not licensed to do that. So we give a range. So when we go to the listing appointment with our seller this afternoon, we say, hey, based on the comps that I pulled, the property value for your house is somewhere between 147 and 151,000 because we have three exact substitution houses for you. This is the perfect storm. And now your seller should say, oh, great. I want to list at 149.9. Well, that is within the range. It should sell. And ta-da, that is how the principle of substitution works. By substituting your listing or your potential listing in for properties that have already sold, it's going to tell you then that house is going to sell at somewhere in those numbers. That is the principle of substitution. Now, <clears throat> here's where the art comes in. Because typically, unless you're in a production housing edition. Sometimes they call those a vinyl village. Sometimes you hear them called a throw and go, whatever. If the house is, you're selling is in a production home builder, like TK Construction, one of the nationwide builders, and there are where they build the same model a hundred times, you might find this. But what you might find and let's change the story. So the first house that we found is actually a three bedroom, two and a half bath. And the second house that we found is actually 1300 square feet. And the fourth house that we found is actually on three acres. So let's do this so that it looks right. So that it looks like all the others. The first bedroom, or the first was three bedrooms, two and a half bath. So what you see are three that have sold, but they are not an exact replica or an exact duplicate. They are slightly close. Well, here's the problem. You are going to need to alter that value. You're, you're going to need to alter these values. And you have to alter this house to match your house. This is called an adjustment. You will have to adjust the values. People tend to get this confused because you are adjusting the house value that already sold to meet your house. It's not the other way around. So let's go through the logical thought process that will help you. If someone has paid $150,000 to buy a house that is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, would they pay more or less for a property that is three bedroom, two bath, right? This house 
is actually smaller, is it not? It's only a three bedroom, two bath, where this new house that you have found here is actually a three bedroom, two and a half. So in your brain process that you're using, this is how you should walk yourself through it to understand the concept. If they paid 150 for two and a half baths, they would pay less for two baths. So you have to reduce this value. It's less than 150 because that house is bigger. So here's the question. How much less? Here's the answer. I have no idea. Because it is an art and it depends on a whole bunch of things. Is that half bath on Lake Conroe, where the, all the houses are $2 million homes, that half bath might be worth $50,000 in the value of a home? Or is that half bath sitting down in King Park in Virginia, where it has no value? It's an inner city area, an inner city home. So there may be no difference in value. That's the problem that you have. That is the art part of this. We have no idea. I cannot tell you that a half a bath is always worth this. That is why it drives the numbers guy in me bonkers because there's no formula. It's going to depend on your professionalism to understand that a half a bath in Center Grove is worth $3,000. And like I said, the more of these you do, the better you get. Because at some point you're going to go, dude, I've been doing this 20 years. I've sold 40 homes inside of this uh, township. <clears throat> I know that a half a bath is worth about $3,000. So if someone paid 150 for a two and a half bath, how much would they pay for a two bath? And then you would go, okay, so that would be about 147,000 because I had to adjust it down for my smaller home. And then you look at the second one and go, okay, well, this one's close but it's 1,300 square feet. My house is bigger. And if they paid 147,000 for this 1,300 square foot home, they would pay more for a 1,500 square foot home. Well, how much would they pay? And now we can play that same argument again. For this example, I'm going to say $2,000. So now, because my house is bigger, I have to adjust that price up. I have to take the smaller home that sold for $147 and adjust it up to meet my 1,500 square foot home. So now I think it's worth $149. And then the third example... Well, this one's got a lot more land. If they paid 151 for a house on three acres, would they pay more or less for a house on one acre? The answer is less. Well, how much less? Once again, I don't know. But let's say these two acres are worth $10,000. Therefore, I have to adjust the price of this house, which direction? Down to 141. Now, if you are having problems getting this, I suggest you hit pause, scroll back a little bit, and go through it again, or email me at raymond at realuniversity.com and maybe we could talk about it a little bit more. But now that we have adjusted this house, 
we now have a new set of numbers. And based upon these comps, your seller's range is now somewhere between 141 and 149. Now he says, oh, I want a list at 149.9. That is outside the range. You as a professional go, dude, you understand there has never been a house that has sold that is configured like yours that has sold for 149.9. We could do it at 149 or somewhere else. But he says, oh, I want to do it at 149.9. Well, remember, you have to obey. Okay. We'll list it at 149.9. Hopefully, your professionalism will help guide them and they go, yeah, I thought that was kind of high. Maybe we should do it at 147.9. Yeah, that's probably a better number. So they come in here at 147.9 because it's now in that range. This is the principle of substitution. I guarantee you are going to need to know this on my exam and probably the state. If you, like I said, if you do not understand the math in this, call me or email me and we'll go through it again. This is how a property would get adjusted. They must adjust it between the comps. The problem also could be you can find nothing close and now you start adjusting everything. Oh, I had to adjust the number of bedrooms and the square footage and the age. And at some point you may go, dude, that's not even a comp. I've had to adjust four or five different things and now I'm not even in the right realm. This problem arises all the time. We call those a white elephant, you know. Dude, you've got the biggest house in the neighborhood. There are no comps for you. You know, you've got the only five-bedroom house. Remember the principle of regression? There are no other five-bedroom houses. I've got to use a four-bedroom house. We're going to adjust the price to match, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I adjusted it five grand and it should have been 10 grand. That's going to bring that value down. That's the principle of regression. So when you assign a dollar value to the difference, you have to know what you're doing, okay? And those adjustments are made right here. They are explaining it. But the concept I tell you is to just think through this. If they paid this number for a house that was two and a half, my house only has two, that's a smaller home. It's going to go down. And we did. We adjusted the property down. If my house is a bigger home, this one had 15, this one has 13, we adjusted it up. That is how you would adjust properties for the sales comparison approach. That's the first method by which the appraiser will try and determine a value. 